I've got an absolute monster for you today. I want to take you back to 1982 and relative newcomers and upstarts in the equipment industry Ping have just released their first set of beryllium copper irons, the I2. And little do they know, within that set, they've actually developed one of the most iconic wedges of all time, the uh, Ping I2 Copper Beryllium Wedge. So I've come down to the Berkshire Golf Club, probably my favourite golf course in the whole of the UK. And we've teamed up with Golf Clubs for Cash, one of the leading retailers of pre- and they provided us with some absolute gems to test. So please check them out in the description below. And I've picked this up for the bargain price of £79.99. This golf club is over 40 years old, so I can't wait to put it through its paces and see how it stacks up against the modern day equivalent. So as I said, this was first introduced in 1982 and the design was pretty revolutionary. As you can see, it had a cavity back, so that perimeter weighting helped with the forgiveness. But the really interesting bit for me was this particularly thin sole area. So they thinned out this sole, which saved weight, which allowed them to move it further up the club to give you a higher toe. So arguably, this is the original high toe wedge. Another really interesting design feature, which made it exceptional out of the bunkers, was the sole geometry. If I bend the club back here and you begin to see the sole, you'll see how there's very, very little bounce on the heel side of the club. Now, when you open the face, the heel is generally the first bit that gets into the sand. So this made the entrance to the sand really, really smooth. Then as you move along the sole of the club and you get to the middle and the toe, there's loads of bounce. And that would kick in and help the exit of the club. So the club itself just traveled really smoothly through the bunkers. And as I said, made it one of the best bunker clubs of all time. So there's only really one place to start this test, in the sand. And I've got a bunker just here. Now I've tested an awful lot of wedges in my time, so I'm really keen to see how this legend gets on. So let's hit a couple away and see how it feels. Oh. I have to say, I mean, we've got some really high quality sand here at the Berkshire and it's beautifully raked, which does help. But that really did slip through with very, very little resistance. Let's go again. I don't know if you can hear that, that lovely sort of nippy, slappy sound as it hits the sand. That, that feels fantastic. And I'm, I'm quite relieved it stands up to the hype there. So I wonder how this sole would stand up if I give myself a slightly trickier lie. So that's pretty unpleasant. Let's see if it can dig this out. That's come out pretty well as well. So the versatility of the sole, that stacks up as well. Okay, well that was really good out of the sand, but I did kind of expect that because of this club's reputation, but we need it to do more than just be a one trick pony out of the bunker. So I've got kind of a bread and butter pitch shot here, 25 yards. I'm gonna to go to this short right pin here off some quite tight Heathland turf. So let's see if this sole can do anything with this shot. The answer, I think, is yes. That stiffed it, that felt great. It was a little bit of resistance from the turf there. It didn't slide through quite as easy as it did through the sand, but the result was really, really good. So I don't think I need to hit anymore. So that was some really nice performance from the bunker, and I really enjoyed that nippy little pitch shot. But as a man who's prone to the odd wonky approach shot, I need to know whether it can get me out of some trouble, some long stuff. So I've dropped one here in this kind of heathery, gorsy, rough area. It's buried a bit, and I want to see if this club head still got what it takes to cut through this grass, and I'm pretty short-sighted as well, so let's see what it can do. It's come out nicely. Again, cut through really nicely. I think that minimal bounce on the heel is something really interesting. That was some really good short game performance. But one concern I do have about buying a wedge that's over 40 years old is has the spin rate diminished? So I'm going to head to the practice ground. I want to use my Foresight GC Quad launch monitor to take some spin rates and see where it stands. But I want to see how it stacks up against potentially a modern day equivalent. So I've got with me Ping's brand new S159 e-grind wedge, which is based on the i2. So let's get to the practice ground. Let's get some numbers and see how it stacks up. We're down at the practice ground now because I wanted to hit some mid-length pitch shots. Now, we're going to use real balls, so I've got Titleist Pro V1 Xs, and we're going to measure the data on the Foresight GC Quad launch monitor. Now, we're off mats here. It's a really nice uh, artificial surface, which is probably a good thing. It means I'm not going to get any grass caught between the club and the ball and give us any misreading. So, 
I've got three shots in my arsenal, really, in my pitching game. I tend to play what feels like a half, a three quarter, and a full. So I'm going to do that with both clubs, and I want to see the launch and the spin numbers to see how they compare. So I'm going to start with the I2 and hit my half shot. Oh, hang on. Before I forget, if you're enjoying this content, please hit the like button, comment down below if you played the old Ping I2 Copper Beryllium Wedge, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Okay, so that's interesting. So launch angle there, just under 30 degrees at 29.4. Backspin feels relatively high at 8,498 revs. So it'd be interesting for that to compare that to the S159. So the S159, I'm gonna give it that same sort of half feel, that position that I'm pretty familiar with. And let's see how it compares in launch and spin. Yeah, touch more spin. It actually popped up a little bit more, slightly higher launch angle, 30.7. And the spin number is coming in at just under 8,600. So I'm getting a little more grip off the face of that. Very similar carry, so that's interesting. Let's hit some three quarter ones now and see if that carries through. Okay, 30.6 launch has come up a little bit and 9,489 in the spin. That feels like quite a good healthy number again. So let's find out what the S159 will do. Okay, launch a little bit lower there, 29.4. So coming out a little flatter window, and 9,484 revs of spin. So some interestingly similar spin numbers so far. So let's hit my full shot and see if it continues. And that was under 30 degrees of launch again, 29 and a half, and then 11,837 revs of backspin again, which seems a lot. So let's see how the modern day equivalent compares with a full swing. Okay, popped up in launch a little bit, 31.1. Again, comparable, but a bit less. So 11,615 revs on that one. Very, very interesting. You'll have seen through that, the spin numbers are actually pretty comparable. And on the full shot, this was actually generating a little bit more, the older wedge, and it's 42 years old. And it's taken me back a bit because this new S159 wedge is literally fresh out of the wrapper. It's never hit any more any shots before. So the grooves are as fresh and as new and as sharp as possible. But there is potentially another story to be told here because back in the day when they were making these I2s and the irons, as well as the wedges, some of them were built with what we called box grooves, U-shaped grooves, which ultimately the USGA and RNA deemed to create too much spin and they made them illegal for competition. Now we've spoken to Ping, we've given them the serial number. And it's actually really difficult to tell whether your club has box grooves or legal grooves for competition. But from the spin numbers I'm looking at there, I would suggest that this is probably one of the old box grooves. Now, I wanna do a further test here because those were dry. And we've got a new finish with the Ping wedges, which Ping are very proud of, and I know a lot of the other manufacturers are quite jealous of, the Hydra Pearl finish, which claims to produce exceptional spin when wet. So let's spray these faces up. I brought a little spray bottle along, hit the same sort of shots, and figure out where the spin is now. So I've got with me a handy little bottle of water. I'm gonna absolutely drench the face. We're gonna start with the older I2 first. I'm even gonna drench up that ball. Let's see what that does to the spin number. I'm going to go in my half shot again. Okay, so spin came off quite significantly there. That was only just over 5,000 revs. So 5,079, launch popped right up. So when you get less friction, launch generally pops up, spin comes down. That's exactly what's happened there. 36.9 launch, 5,079 spin. Let's try the S159. And let's do the same thing, that similar half shot feel, and see where we go. Wow, that is a big old difference. So the launch has only just gone up, it's not even 31 degrees, but the backspin is over 3,000 revs more, but 8,155 revolutions per minute out of this, which would suggest to me that Ping's Hydra Pearl finish is working very, very well here. Well, I found that fascinating. Around the greens, 
This old copper beryllium ping eye too still did a really great job for me. The entrance and exit through the sand, how little resistance it created. Let me play some really, really good bunker shots. Even the little nippy shot off the tight turf, a pitch shot and hacking it out of that longer rough still performed really, really well. And then when we came here to the practice ground and started hitting those three quarter half and full shots, the spin number was super comparable with even a brand new fresh S159, which got me even suspicious about the grooves. However, then we introduced the moisture. And I think, the, as you can see, the S159 and the Hydropearl technology there from Ping elevated it to a completely different level of spin. So if you're someone who plays in the desert and never sees any moisture whatsoever, you can probably get some really similar performance for a little bit less money. But if you play in early morning dew, rain, or any type of moisture, then you're gonna really sacrifice some spin numbers from a newer model.